Hello and welcome to Empower Her Women in Ministry podcast, where we empower women to embrace their unique callings in the kingdom of God. I am your host, Iris, and today we're going to be diving into our first episode. Yes, that's right. We're going to be talking about the topic of embracing your unique calling. Our scripture focus for this podcast is going to be Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. The scripture states, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So in this episode, I'm going to help guide you to understanding and embracing your unique calling. Also going to provide some practical life applications and resources at the end. Embracing your unique calling. I decided to talk about this today due to some experiences in you ask the question or when the question is asked what is your purpose what what has God called you to you know you get the deer face the deer headlights you know like what do you mean so that has been the common answer and you know it got me thinking you know during this course of this journey of how many women have gone through life without knowing what God has truly called them to. And there could be many reasons, many factors in life, especially, you know, years then, women were not accepted in the church. You know, we weren't accepted to do only but, you know, missionary work or, you know, you were allowed to teach a Sunday class to the children, but And a lot of that has stunted the growth of women ministry. Looking at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, as I began to just kind of go through different translations, I found that one translation really stood out on what God was doing when he created all humanity, men and female. This translation says that for we are his creation. I mean, it's it's not, you can't deny that God created women. We didn't just come out of the woodworks. He specifically pulled a rib and created Eve, which is very significant when it comes to a, a woman's nature the the nature that we are sensitive, the nature that we can perceive from the inside out. And that's a huge blessing and a gift for us as females, but as well as the male when is united with a female. Because the insight that we carry is to help push forward the calling in both our lives. This translation says, for we are his creation, created through Jesus Christ, created through him, ultimate for good works. And God has before ordained that we should live in them. In what? In the good works. Here's four pointers that I pulled out of that. Number one, his masterwork, work of art, and that is what we are. Doesn't matter, male or female, we are God's masterpiece. We are his work of art. For years, for years, women have been impressed. And, and I wonder so often, what was the enemy doing all these years when he was suppressing women generation after generation? What does he know? What does he know that caused him to, to raise up people to oppress women, to destroy God's 
master work to destroy God's work of art. What was he? What did he know? And that is still obviously a work in progress because there's so much that God had created in humanity, so many different realms, so many different levels that, yeah, you may get one piece and then you'll find that there's another piece. And then you're going to realize as you go through the levels of uncovering God's creation, who we are, you're going to find that we hold such of a great value to God. A high, like this standard in God, this love, this appreciation for who we are found in God, it just gets wider and wider. The second thing I noticed out of the scripture, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, and ready to be used. This part here works me. You know, when when I started, you know, coming to church and walking through Christ, um, it's true that, you know, like a child, you might not be ready to eat solid food. You have to go through the process of milk first and then transition to the meat and then be able to transition to other things as you grow up. Um, but you're still ready to have the milk. You're still ready at some point to have the meat. And I just thought about a few, you know, experiences as I got through the church that one of the biggest one that stands out to me is when I was so on fire, I was ready to be used in any place of the kingdom of God anything I don't I didn't care if I did the toilets I didn't I didn't care I just knew that there was this burning fire inside of me and I couldn't contain it and I wanted the world to receive Christ now not just Christ but I wanted them to experience God his presence his love and that is where my journey began but I also remember you know, being held back. And I thought that over through the years and I said, what could have been done differently? I didn't sit back and say, oh, I can't believe these people did that to me. No, I sat back and said, what could I have done differently? In every walk of life, in every part of the path that I've taken and things happen that didn't make sense or that wasn't in, I should just say that didn't feel right, didn't feel connected to what I felt or discerned. Um, I can always feel when something was off. And I think women have that intuition period. We can always feel when something's off. We have to be very careful of that. With life, the struggles, the pain it brings, the things we carry, the grace we're used we're give the grace we've been given to be able to carry for such a long period of time, like long suffering. If those things don't heal, then our discernment for sure is going to be off. And we're going to start predicting things that are projecting things that are not really true because we're projecting through the lens of pain. But if, if that's not a factor, then you would know that, Inside of you, the Holy Spirit saying something here is off. And you begin to kind of investigate what, what it is that we're really, you know, feeling. And in that moment, in many moments of being, uh, how do I say, gone through these places in ministry where God has called me, kind of set me up there, had me doing these things, which I'm, I'm very humble to do. Um the response towards the work from the the people weren't always the best. But each one was not something for me to have hate towards, but to have 
eyes to see the things that God does not desire. The things that God is not liking in the church. And those were life lessons. That's what I call life lessons. I walk through them, seeing what God is displeased with and say, those are the things God doesn't like. And, um, and that's it. And it wasn't something where I could say, you know, have regret or, um, anger or hatred towards what they were doing. It just was very simple and clear that this is not that this is this God is just showing the things that he dis- is displeased with in the body. And I say that because you might have felt where you were ready to be used and didn't understand one, maybe you weren't released to do those things or two, you were and didn't receive the value or appreciation from it. Could have easily been used to form what they would consider church her, but that really needs to be looked at to identify if really you were hurt by the church or you were just hurt by the lack of value and appreciation for what you brought to the table. And we have to keep in mind and that we have to be able to, to divide. You know, the spirit divides bone and marrow divides to separate to see what is what is true and what is not because pain has a way of triggering our senses to create a defense mechanism to keep and prevent you from going into a place that we that might hinder or bring more pain but the reality of that is that it right there in the middle of that happening you must be mature enough to say what is really happening and I must be able to divide because that can hinder you're ready to be used somewhere else in the world doesn't always have to be in church this past podcast is created for all walks of life whether you're an entrepreneur whether you work a nine to five, whether you're a mom, it doesn't matter. You are the ministry and everywhere you go, you give out the glory of God. We want to make sure that we are careful in guarding our ready to be used. The next thing, which is the third one, is taking paths which he set. Oof. Oh boy. I often have seen, and I am... I say this because um, anyone who knows me knows that I am, I operate in the prophetic. I have the spirit of discernment. I have gifts. I have things that I can see. Um, Oftentimes I am the go-to person to find wisdom and understanding for what steps the Lord is ordering. Um, So that's a seer's anointing. Also, You know, the timing, anointing, like I have so many things that um, were gifted to me as well as the gift of the father's heart, which reveals to me the sadness, his happiness, his joy in moments where he reveals them. And that gift I asked for. That's a gift that I, I asked for. The other gifts I didn't ask for, I just had, I was born with, but this gift I have because I asked and so I, it's a dangerous gift because it, it springs upon you in moments of different places, which is good for prayer focuses. The pain of God is, it could be very consuming. His heart can be very consuming. And when I say taking paths, which he said, there are paths that God said that never makes, couldn't possibly not make sense to us and sometimes makes sense to us. And we have to discern a little further on the steps that he's ordering. Uh, For example, you know, someone might say, I feel like God is calling us to move here. And that's great. But for what reason? Because God doesn't do things without reasoning. It can't just be the reason to bring revival. There, There has to be a work. There's a work that he is calling you to do. What is the work? You know, not being able to sit and and process what the work is or seeking him out. They kind of just jump the gun and go. 
and have no clue what they're stepping into, which can cause a lot of um, unnecessary warfare, all because you were ready to be used, but you didn't know the path that he set before you. That can come in a lot of different forms. That's one example. It could be another example of a burning desire in your hearts that you desire. You desire it so much that you probably even made it an idol and don't even know. That idol will be the thing that leads you or sets your path. And then you will call it God. But God said, you don't understand why everything went south. I for sure knew this was God. And so there's a lot of things that could lead us down a path that he has not set. Though there is a path, we just need to know which one has he set. The fourth one is living the good life which he prearranged. Guys, there's nothing wrong with being blessed. The Bible says that those who walk with him are blessed a shield of favor surrounding them. The righteous will have a shield of favor. And that will cause you to have a good life. Even when troubles come, it would be untouchable. What does that mean? It doesn't mean that you will not go through that situation. It just means that it will not overcome you. The sorrow, all of that, it will not overcome you because you would be in the good of God. Now, you know, we live in a world right now that often is trying to define us, our worth, our value, all by our exterior factors. As Christians, it's crucial that we recognize that we embrace the unique calling that God has placed in our life. Our calling is significant part of our identity in Christ. It should be the foundation for everything we do. It is through the understanding and embracing our calling that we truly walk in the good works that God has preordained for us, the path that he's already set before us. So why is this so important? Well, first, it gives us a sense of purpose and direction, which is big for mental health. Our brain produces adrenaline. Adrenaline produces purpose. And when life has no purpose, Your adrenaline begins to slow down and depression creeps in. Sadness creeps in. Joy is gone. So it is important to know, one, for your mental health state. For you to be able to live in a healthy mindset, you have to have the sense of purpose and direction in life. When we know what God is calling us to, then we will focus on that and put our efforts into that, fulfilling that purpose. That is what's going to help us stay aligned with God's will and avoid the distractions that can lead us away from his plan onto another path. We're breaking down Ephesians chapter 2, where the scripture is reminding us that we are what the master work, the work of art. That was created by God with purpose and intention. He intentionally created us with purpose. When we look at the calling of our life, we are to be intentionally looking for our purpose as well. We are to have the mind of Christ that even the mind of Christ will bring you to that place to be intentional about pursuing purpose as Christ was here on earth. He did the same. He was intentional about pursuing purpose. God's will on earth as it is in heaven. Another recommendation that I will suggest is based on 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 to 7. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service but the same Lord. There is a spiritual assessment test that you can take for free. One is for spiritual gifts and two will do the kinds of services. This will help you have key focus points 
on what to build on. You know, James chapter 1, verse 5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. God is not looking to withhold anything back from any of us. He's looking to give us the knowledge and wisdom and understanding that we need to become successful in the purpose he has called us to. That's how loving he is and willing he is to give us all the things that we ask of in wisdom. So I would begin to at least set aside a dedicated time each day, which you probably already are doing for prayer and Bible study. Um, and just start doing like morning devotionals, gradually increase, increasing that time and being fed by the Holy Spirit to help increase this thing. Breakings. The gifts of services will help you identify your abilities in the ministry, whether it's to serve the church or to serve in the world, is all a part of how you are able to release the glory of God in your life and the people around you and the, and the things you encounter. That is what this is all about. These things will help you build up confidence in your walk with Christ. It's going to help equip you in your unique calling and what you were designed to do here on earth. And this leads me to another scripture, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For the Spirit of God gave us, does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Self-discipline is... Abilities that result in a calm, well-balanced mind and self-control. Self-control is one of the gifts of the spirit. It is a powerful weapon that many are struggling to obtain. The self-control, the the gift of self-control can do powers wonders. Um, I don't think we've ever given enough emphasis on this one gift. And I am giving this scripture so that we understand that all these things in life, all these things that lead up to your unique calling has to come from the ability that results from a place of rest, a well-balanced mind, and self-control That means before I take a leap of faith, I am processing and from a place of rest in Christ, I am doing this with a sound mind and now I'm going to move forward and self-control. If you are struggling with confidence, um, I would suggest to begin to speak affirmations in your life. I don't think that Christians understand the power of the word of God as much as they hear people preach or teach about the power of word of God. They don't understand that speaking it over yourselves daily, speaking it over yourselves daily will help to build confidence and give you the ability, but it would unlock spiritual things that Uh, We can't really get into right now. But for example, in this particular moment with Ephesians chapter two, I would speak. I am equipped by God for every good work. God's power is at work within me. Those two affirmations I would speak daily. Daily. And you're going to see that by doing daily affirmations in your life, is going to help renew your mind. It's going to help you become that new creation. Also, it's so important for women to have some type of partners, you know, like a group of women that you get together and you kind of just do prayer gathering or, you know, talk about the word of God over a cup of coffee and just kind of like go through the things that you're struggling with. Find someone that 
a support group or maybe even create a support group. Maybe you were called to create that support group, but to begin to share things like fears and doubts and pray together and come into some type of clarity on what is happening in the moments of your life to help empower and build one another. You know, Proverbs 16, 3 says that we are to commit to the Lord whatever we do and he will establish our plans. And so by doing that, uh, committing what we are seeing or what we desire would be great moment for you to establish a vision board. I remember years ago when I was led to create a vision board. I wish I had it now. I wish I had that board now. I didn't I didn't know then um, the power the vision board had to keep someone focused and building towards the vision. You know, the Bible says make the vision plain so others may run with it. And that's what the vision board is. It's literally showing like this is what I believe, know that God has called me to. This is these are the passions to my pursuit. And this is where I want to glorify him. Where, I, where I'm being called to glorify him. And the vision board does just that, you know, so using images and words that represent the calling and the goal and placing it somewhere where you can see it daily is a reminder of being intentional on pursuing that purpose. Um, setting goals, you know, break down your calling into specific actionable goals. Let's take the word smart. We're going to use smart as a category so like s is for specific m is for measurable a is for achievable r is for relevant and t is for your time bound this will help ensure that your goals are clear and attainable and that's where we begin we start where we can Clarify what we're being called to do. And second, make it in measurable uh, timing so that you can achieve each goal. I have workbooks. I have books that are waiting. I took a board and I divided it into a timeline. Three months, six months, nine months, and 12 months. In each category I placed a different book by realistic timing so if one was kind of already ready to publish or or almost done in creating then I would put that obviously into three months and then I worked my way out into 12 months and so that that way within that year this was my goal line well it worked I got you know some things published within the three months, six months, got a few more things done, you know, five months. Like, so here I am and I've already have about one, two, three and four. And I'm, and now I'm just working on daily and putting into my book. So you have to break it down where you can measure it out, especially, you know, being so busy we have to have more self-control in our time management. Develop a detailed plan, which that's what pretty much I did. I took a detailed plan and I made the steps to achieve those goals. And I go back to review the progress, maybe even adjust it. And when I'm done, I kind of celebrate my little small victories and I keep going. And that is how we accomplish the things that God has called us to. Um, there are some books that can help you. Called to Create by Jordan Reiner is one. You can explore that one. Discover Your God-Given Gifts by Don and Katie Fortune. Stuff on the website that you can actually take to spiritualgiftsassessment.com. You can find that there. Lifekeys.com. It provides tools and resources to help you discover your spiritual gifts, your personality type, and your passions. If there's one thing this world is not lacking, it's resource. So there's tons of resource out there. You just have to be intentional about what you are pursuing to grow. What are you pursuing to master for the master so that his glory can be revealed here on earth?
So thank you for joining me on this first episode of Empower Her Women in Ministry podcast. Remember, you are God's masterpiece created with a unique purpose. Embrace your calling with confidence, knowing that God has equipped you for the good works he has prepared in advance. Be sure to stay tuned next week for another inspiring episode. Until then, let's close out in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for creating each of us with a unique purpose. Help us to seek your guidance and embrace our callings with confidence. Remove any fear and doubt and equip us to walk in the plans that you have prepared for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Before we wrap it up, I want to invite you to my website at www.irisleon.co. There you'll find a variety of courses designed to help you grow spiritually, professionally, and personally. Whether you're looking to enhance your leadership skills or deepen your faith or just learn about new business strategies, you could just find it there. And while you're on the site, don't forget to check out the store. We've got some products from books to devotionals, all faith based, plus also, I encourage you that if you want to enjoy the podcast as an ad-free zone, then consider subscribing to our partnerships. You're going to find all the details on this.